Welcome to Parks and Rec Today. My name is Liddy Gutfeld and I am your host. I'm also the Parks and Recreation and Community Services Director for the City of San Bernardino. Parks and Rec Today will bring you up-to-date topics about things going on in the city, in our parks, in our community centers, and all around. We're excited about the month of May because we are celebrating Water Safety Month. This month, you can expect a huge campaign of social media posts, website posts, and so much more, including activities that are gonna be happening all throughout the city. But today, I'm excited to bring you Parks and Rec Today, the Water Safety Month Edition. All right, we are so excited for this special segment of Parks and Rec Today. This month we are celebrating Water Safety Month and I could not be more excited about introducing my next guest. He is Baron Brown, the City of San Bernardino's Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me here. So Baron, you and I have had a few conversations and I think you have so many amazing stories to share and that's what I love about this segment is we're just gonna dive, no pun intended, right in. Um, I think it's important to talk about um, accessibility and equity in aquatics and I think that when we look at the demographics of San Bernardino, I think that the city is doing a good job of making sure that we have the number of pools that are accessible. But I wanna talk about maybe the other side of it, why people might not access those pools and why they might not even know about those pools. And so why don't you tell us your story as okay. a black man? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about growing up and really what it was like to either have access or not have access to pools. Well, um, I was born and started off the first part of my life, first nine years or so in Compton, California, and then moved to Los Angeles. And there wasn't a lot of talk about pools. I mean, if you went, it was, it was a great thing, but you're like, I don't know how to swim. I haven't really learned. Um, it wasn't something that I would even say culturally at that point in the early 60s that was really, really talked about. It was more football, basketball, playing on the street. Swimming, uh, kind of cool, maybe. Right. So we, it really wasn't there for us. Um, and I'll say that collectively as my family, but eventually when we moved to Los Angeles, everyone did learn to swim except for me. Mm. And got a little story behind that one. <laughs> and <laughs> so you move, so you're in your teens, early teens? Yeah, I'm pre-teen and then going into my teens, okay. yes. So now there's access to this pool and now you have family members, brothers, sisters, cousins, whatever swimming at this pool yes and it's your turn to go to the pool and it's my turn to go to the pool and it was what a happens? public pool it was in los <laughs> angeles um, we lived in a in a, uh, a pretty nice area of los angeles so there was access to this public pool but the thing was is that when you're young you have an older brother who's five years older than you then you know you get horse play and mm -hmm. and he horse played a bit too much and i almost drowned because i wasn't competent in the water right. and it traumatized me so much that i said i gotta learn to swim <laughs> and that's really really what it was it right. was a, sig a significant emotional event that changed my behavior forever and my appreciation of water yeah and then once i learned to swim it was on. It couldn't keep me out of the water. I love it. And it's it's wild, though, when you talk about those experiences, because I, I'm almost willing to say if I were to round up 10 people and ask them if you almost drowned, would you ever go and learn how to swim? My mom had a very similar experience with cousins and almost drowned and never learned how to swim. And so it was her priority when she had children to make sure that we swim before we walked. That was her thing. My kids will swim before they walk. So, um, you know, fear, especially when there's a drowning incident or almost drowning incident is instant. But um, I think it's important to share to our listeners and to our viewers um, that there is something past that fear. And I want you to tell us the story of what happens when Baron becomes not only competent, but a really good swimmer. So what happens? Well, well, what happens was, was that instead of the water traumatizing me, I gained an extremely high level of respect for the water and then an affection and affinity with the water. Mm -hmm. And um, I had always had a fantasy of learning how to scuba dive um, since I was probably about 14, because mm -hmm. I fell in love with the water. 
and see all the fish on the wild. Watch the show, Jacques Cousteau. I know I'm dating myself. <laughs> and and um, eventually, when I was uh, in the military, in the Coast Guard, not only did you need to have water safety and proficiency, but um, within my job, I learned how to scuba dive, and I became certified in that. And I'm only one of three black folks that I know mm. that are certified divers. Now, there may be more out there that are watching this, but ain't a lot of us. <laughs> right. So it was really fascinating um, um, diving in different parts of the world and so on. It's been, it's been fun. It was, it was life impacting. And I love, I love the water still. So you brought up something interesting, yes. scuba diving. So I'm going to do a shameless plug for our water safety challenge event of that's course. happening on May 21st. We are actually going to have a scuba diving um, show for y'all. We're going to have somebody um, showing us what it is to scuba dive and what it looks like to breathe underwater in a sense, right? Yes. Um, so you brought up the Coast Guard. Yes, I did. This is something that is intriguing because now we've gone from barren as a young child, no access to pools, barren as a teenager, almost drowned by horseplay with brother, and then Baron as a officer, give me the official title that your rank that you had in the Coast Guard. Okay, I am I am a retired captain, which is equivalent to a colonel for those folks who are, aren't familiar with the seagoing services. So for the Coast Guard and the Navy, I would be a captain, so that's right under an admiral. But I came in enlisted. I was a junior enlisted person, and, and I came in late in my life. I joined the Coast Guard when I was 27 years old. Wow. So, and still made the captain, so there's hope. <laughs> Well, for first, everyone. thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it. Second, I think it's a, a beautiful thing when we can turn a almost tragedy into a beautiful career story and a passion and a love for water. Um, I know both you and I share um, our, our disability stories of how many knee surgeries we've had <laughs> right. and so on and so forth. So um, maybe you can share with our audience that benefit of what it is when you learn how to be a competent swimmer and be water safe and then use swimming as an exercise. What type of benefit have you experienced? Well, that? one thing, and when you learn, learn to swim and you become water safe and you are now in a position to help others and you start to learn more and more about water safety because you become more and more proficient. And I have fortunately been able to save a couple of people mm -hmm. because of my competency and, and knowledge about how to help someone who is struggling in the water. And um, that was something that also came into play with both my professions, 21 years in law enforcement and retiring from there and then 32 years with the Coast Guard. Yeah. So that, that it's, it's, it's really changed my life. And now as an exercise, as a, uh, a little bit older than middle-aged person <laughs> as an exercise that that gives you virtually no shock because you're in the water but is as arduous as anything you would ever try uh, I have to I have to tell you swimming's my number one swimming's my number one well you heard it here folks swimming can be the number one exercise for you no matter <laughs> your age or ability I'm gonna ask you as our diversity, inclusion and equity officer, um, if you had a message to anyone in San Bernardino or anyone around the world that is a non-swimmer, what would your message to them be? My message would be, please, please, please learn to swim. It, it won't just benefit you, it'll benefit others. You may be in a position to save someone that you love. You may be in a position to save just another human being. Please pay it forward and help people that aren't as confident in the water and always be a good lookout. The, the adults always take it for granted that somebody else is watching. That's right. The and then there you go and now little Johnny's in the water and he's at the bottom of the pool. Don't assume anything around water. Water can be your enemy or your friend. Make it your friend. It can be your friend. San Bernardino, I think it's time for us to flip the script. Let's not be a statistic this summer. Please make sure that you are water safe because drowning is preventable. Make sure you come and join us at our water safety event on May 21st at the Jerry Lewis Family Swim Center. And with that, we bid you good night.